Hello, guys, and welcome back to the Des Bishop Podcast. It's just a very quick intro to say that we have an amazing episode today with Jason Brown, which I was going to put up tomorrow, Friday, but I'm putting it up today because he himself has an amazing new podcast that starts tomorrow, so I wanted to get the promo up nice and early. So this is me chatting to Jason Byrne about recent passing of his dad and it's kind of a chat about that and about grief and a little bit about coronavirus and it's a fantastic app and uh his audio is not amazing because it's just direct zoom audio but it's not bad so thanks very much guys for listening and i'll chat to you at the end of the app no, I'm, i was gonna use the video for this how do you feel about that because i see that you haven't done your makeup <laughs> <laughs> Because, Jay, I have a ring light. I have a ring light. Of course you do. <laughs> Wait, let me, just get me, let me just see if I can get my ring light on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm shining up lovely. So anyway, listen, let's let, let's let's begin properly, man. Well, well, first of all, just in general, how are you holding up? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm not too bad. And just to say, just real quick, uh, when because we have to do a lot of these video casts and Zooms and yes. WhatsApps and interviews from TV, the best place for me to look the best is in my ensuite with the light off, like with just a bit of light coming in. I've been sitting <laughs> on the toilet so with what? the camera on a tripod because I look better with not too much light. <laughs> why don't you, why aren't you in the toilet right now doing our one? Oh, because I didn't know you were going to use the video. Oh, sorry. sorry. Is that is, is, this, is, is Oh no, but it doesn't matter. I mean, look, everybody looks shit right now. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> like everybody's got like mad hair and bits of things hanging out of them, and you know. So, but I'm how am I holding up? It's it's kind of weird for me because, well, first of all, I think as a comedian as well. I mean, as you, you'll appreciate this, we kind of are on our own a lot anyway. So I, we kind of travel on our own. We spend our times on our own in hotel rooms. Where you know, just before we go on stage, we're on our own. So our mindset is, I think, quite used to being on its on its own. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, people have said that to me, and I'm like, you know, this isn't this isn't <laughs> ideal, but it's not that different to my normal life. It's not the same, but there's elements of it that are pretty similar. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have to think for ourselves as well. We don't go into like we don't have like a like a, an AGM big annual general meeting with like all the board of the company. It's us on a couch with a pen going, geez, I've got to write a show for Edinburgh. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cancelled, no? Oh, no, what I'm saying in that Oh, way, yeah, no, 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 I know, I, I know, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, I was just joking as, around. As a company, I mean, that's how, we haven't got anybody in a room. No, like no. The first fiscal, fiscal month, year, or whatever. But, yeah, but right now, I mean, I'm obviously separated. That's, that's, that's happened. Do you know what I mean? And, and so my children are like, just up the road here so i'm not living with with them yes but uh and and then the other weird thing that happened was and of course you've been through grief yourself just way yeah well that, that was the main thing i was going to talk to you about because you've had a very not ideal situation where you've been left alone with your grief literally weeks after your dad died yeah so um they okay so i told you i mean it's mad like i i totally understand what, what, how it feels when people go up to you at a funeral and they don't know what to say do you know what i mean yes which i, I talk of, about I, in my own show yeah yeah exactly and i've never experienced people coming to me not knowing what to say to me you know it's really weird watching them where i'm going <laughs> but then i don't know what they're supposed to say to me do you know what i mean so i don't know what i didn't know anything about grief i knew nothing about it my dad died right and I don't know if you were there. Were you there for both your parents passing away at that time? I, I, I was. Yeah, I was. Yeah. So I'd never seen it. I'd never seen it and like it because, it, I, well, first of all, the one thing I got out of it was that I'm not afraid of, of death as I, as I was anymore because yes. I've seen it happen. And I've seen it as a kind of a peaceful thing. So my dad was kind of trying to catch his breath, yeah. but he had been like really breathing hard all day, like really horrible. But as did, he did, died, did, did, sorry, did he have the the rattle like that 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 rattly noise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His whole like just in and out and in and out and everything was like and it was all his throat was getting clogged up. Yeah, and yeah, off. yeah. And I, and I know it's really weird because like okay, so what happened to my dad as people are wondering as well is that he had a stroke. It only lasted two days because I always said my dad was a jammy bastard. Do you know what I mean? Like he didn't get the full on 
he didn't get brought home from hospital. Like I seen how bad he was when he had the stroke. He couldn't really speak. He didn't know where he was. He was getting worse and worse. The bleeds were spreading. And I was just thinking, oh my God, please, please don't let that man come home, right? Now, there's people that are listening now that have got stroke victims in their house that are in a bed and they can't move. But there was still a little bit of me that was going, oh, I'd kind of like him to come home, though, even if he is. Yeah, because you, 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 you have to let go completely if he doesn't come home, you know? Yeah, so I didn't. Give, I, I still could think, well, if he's still breathing, even though he's fucked, I could, I, maybe I could still talk to him. He might be able to hear me or something. So I totally understand why people, you know, you know, you know, they, they, they still want to, to have the person at home. Like if you had a choice, like a euthanasian choice, I think a lot of us wouldn't wouldn't probably you know put our parents to like out of yeah you, f- like, you feel like people would find it hard to to actually yeah. say okay that's it so my dad decided that for us so he just let and i watched him leave his body lit like the energy whatever you want to believe it was like someone it was like it was literally like a lilo it's like someone took the air out of him and he just went down he's like he shrunk his whole body as his breath just stopped and then he just literally was i didn't recognize him at all so that's what was good for me. I think anybody who has, if there is anybody that, you know, that you have closely that might, that, you know, you know, if you get, like, basically what I'm trying to say, if you get a chance to be with someone when they're going to pass away, just be with them. It's good. It is good for you. But, you know, so, I have to say that, I, I don't know if you realize this, but, it, like, it is actually luck. Like, it's a real privilege that you got to have that experience because, actually, it's very difficult to be there because so much can so much can go wrong. Like, for example, my mother wasn't there when my dad died because she had gone down to get coffee. We'd been in the room for hours waiting for my dad to die. Then she went down to just make some breakfast. And it happened so fast. And I I went, I walked down the stairs. My mother looked at me. She said, he's gone, right? And I was like, yeah, he's gone. You know, but so so she she just wasn't there by chance. Now, actually, it didn't, didn't bother my mother at all. Whereas my brother, Mike, had gone to pick up his wife and very young child and his wife was pregnant. So we'd been yeah. in the room all night and he went to pick her up and it happened while he was gone. So that was, you know, you just, you, you were, yeah. you, you were lucky actually. Well, Des, this is what happened. Like my auntie Joan and Colette, they, they came in down the corridor. That's my, my dad's two sisters. And they came into the room and he said, they said, how is he? And I went, he's not great. He's, he's really bad now. Like he was dying, you know? And they were like, oh, my God. And then we'd start talking around them, you know, talking just in the room. And I said, look, I'm probably going to try and just, you know, get home for a little bit, maybe for 20 minutes, half an hour. And uh, Because I'd been there for hours. And then my my aunties went, well, look, we'll go down and get a coffee, whatever. And we all walked out of the room. And my dad literally started to die right there, right there. How did you know that, that, how did you know, was it the fish out of water, Brett's? What was the thing that... Okay, so what happened was um, he was starting to, you see, he couldn't swallow. A lot of people who have strokes and go into this deep unconsciousness, they can't swallow. It's, it's another thing. It's literally another thing that's gone. Their swallow is gone. And uh, so it starts to clog up and they start to choke almost. Do you know what I mean? So dad just couldn't swallow. Uh, and the nurses that were there said, look, if he gets really bad, there's no, we're not going to resuscitate him if that's okay with you we went uh yeah yeah yeah. he says because he's basically he's not alive in that bed he's barely alive like you know i mean his behold they had done scans and his whole brain had bled you know so yeah so he was he was he was his he he was kind of choking and then he did a bit of a cough but then not too much stress just little breaths and i held his hand and uh, the nurses were they're they're so amazing those those nurses the male and female nurses they really they're almost like they're they're almost better than doctors because they're always there the doctors aren't there the whole time so their empathy is amazing and this lovely woman just said uh i was holding my dad's hand and my uh what you call it my auntie was holding his shoulder and they said just keep talking to him just keep talking to him he's going there you know and we just kept talking to him and just saying it was okay and everything and to let go and eventually he it just he just stopped like it's he didn't go like and like you know like you imagine and like what he just went and just total silence like and then the breath just came out of him and then he just disappeared and that's why i when i seen him in the coffin in the house 
and he was going into the crematorium. I, it didn't bother me because I knew he wasn't in there. He, they're not in that body. And you can believe science with the energy that leaves or your spirit leaves or whatever you want to say. But I definitely seen and felt something was coming out of him. Like, you know what I mean? Left. So Paddy Byrne just left his body, you know? And I, I, I said in the eulogy, though, he's, he, you know, you're, uh, he's, he's never gone. They're never gone. They're always going to be around you because if you're talking about them, your pictures, your memories, your chats, like the shows you do about your mom and dad and everything, like your, your dad and your mother are well alive. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, amazing. well, the, 100% the memory lives on. But it is a, it, it's funny. You've had the exact same experience that I had in terms of the profound awareness that I got about when they're gone, they're gone. Like the body is irrelevant from, from that minute. Yeah, and that's why I wasn't afraid. Well, you know, we're all going to be afraid of death, but that's why I've seen that the body seems to look after you and it releases you and it helps you die, which was amazing to watch. And then, yeah, yeah, totally gone. But like this thing that people believe, like, you know, that maybe the energy follows you around or people to often see their loved ones after. But it's all down to how your brain looks after you as well. I, I, yeah, I think so. And I, I, I never like to dismiss anybody's stuff because it's it's very – everybody has their own way of, of processing it. But I, I'm like you. I, I, I believe that it's it's the way that, you know, we I, – I, I think personally we keep them alive in, in, our, in our brain and the memories and the stories – and yeah. and the, the resemblance you probably see in your own children and you know there's there's evidence of them everywhere right yeah they always say that uh well well there's this guy called alan watts this guy this dude alan watts i love listening to alan watts right you can he's got he's he always reminds me of your dad he has the exact same accent as your dad <laughs> right you sh so everybody just listen to alan watts and basically that's what your dad sound like <laughs> basically hello i'm alan watts and it's all like that you know yeah 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 it was amazing. When I first met your dad in Edinburgh in the assembly rooms. Oh, that's the then, first time you met. You didn't meet my dad on that New York trip. You only met my dad 2010. Yeah. All right. And it was absolutely brilliant. You know what I mean? And uh, I thought I was literally going to meet him. Yo, what? Yo, JCO. You know, <laughs> you know, and that, like, you know, sound like Des or Mikey or, you know, or Aiden. And it was just like, hello. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Well, because he was in Edinburgh, he was on his best behavior. You know, it really depends who he's talking to, you know. It, it, uh, it, 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 his accent had a way of changing depending on his company, you know. Yeah, and my favorite line ever in that assembly rooms was um, he said, and this is my best memory of your dad. You said to your dad, uh, this is Jason. Uh, he's, he's a comic. And he went, oh, hello, Jason. Nice to meet you. And you said, Jason does kind of like kind of silly comedy, right? That's what you said, like kind of silly. Right? <laughs> and... and I went, uh, yeah, it's kind of like silly. And then he goes, oh, yes, you mean like like funny, funny comedy. And I went, yeah, like funny comedy. Yeah, not like your son talking about <laughs> death. And then he turned to you and he said, Miss Des, actually, your comedy is quite serious. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he was dying of cancer, it was such a funny man. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, he's fucking, of course he thinks my comedy is quite serious. He has to get up on stage every night after I've told the audience his whole life story. And he's fucking half dead fucking walking out on stage. <laughs> what a great thing to do, though. You know what I mean. And so, what what Alan Watts was saying was that our subconscious is uh, can never die. Do you know what I mean? That always stays alive. So when you die, your very your very being, your existence can't leave the earth. That has to stay. So that's why we all we, we all basically live on forever. You know. Yeah. So it's, it, but my my dad, though. Yeah, I mean already. You know, we were talking about the COVID-19 and, and actually my sister was up in the house the other day and she was trying to help my mom cut some hedges. You know, she just lives ne next, uh, very near. And I said, uh, oh, I think dad has a ladder in the shed there. Go and look. <laughs> like, but he's, he's not there anymore. Would you say things like that? You know of what course. I mean? it, takes, it takes, actually, I, I found it, it kind of hurts a little bit or certainly it's a moment when you realize you need to change the tense of how you talk about your dad. That's kind yeah. of like a moment of realization of like, but I still say to this day, like, for example, today, I really do need to go to my mother's place. I don't say mom's old place. I just say I'm going to mom's to pick up the mail, you know, yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I don't say it in the past tense. I think that that must last forever though. Does it? I mean, does, does it, I don't know. 
Well, I assume so. I mean, I guess when we sell it, I guess eventually you just end up with less and less. Like, I, 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 to be honest, I find my dad, we're talking about my dad a lot now, but I find my dad comes up less and less. Like, that is, it's almost kind of sad, but it's almost kind of good because it's a sign that you're moving on. But there will be a time where, you know, the memories of dad, your dad will be fainter, you know? I know that's probably hard to believe now, but it does happen, you know? Well, look, that's a, that's a really good point because what, what's exhausting is to constantly think of somebody who's just died in, in oh, my God, they're dead. Oh, my God, they're dead. Just, you know, in that way. That is exhausting for a human to have to do that. But what's really good is what you just said, is that your, that your dad's memories are not now every single day, which mine from my dad's are right now. But that's really cool because that's a little bit like uh, if you have books on a shelf, let's say, and you... Uh, you want to go and go, oh, actually, what, what was that book? What was that book? And you find a book on the shelf, but you can't remember the plot. But you go, oh, brilliant. And you read it and you go, oh, my God, yes, this was great. So that's what a lot of people say about your, like, you know, people who've passed on you. If you don't, if you don't think about them every day and now and again pick them up like a really good book and then go, oh, my God, do you remember when he did that shit? Yeah, it's great. And sometimes it's happy. Sometimes it's that's happy and sometimes it's sad. But I, I did want to... I did want to ask you because you're really what that was. I mean, first of all, can I just say that in a way you were lucky because you got in with the funeral right before things got restricted because your funeral was lovely, but it was only only then the priest was saying don't shake hands. We weren't at the stage where we were social distancing yet. I know that was really weird. I mean, it must have been was that probably a week before everything hit the fan? Maybe I don't know. Two weeks, but. Uh, what was yeah, the date? What was the married. what was the date of the funeral? Uh, Dad died on the twenty fourth, so Monday, twenty fifth, twenty sixth, twenty seventh of February. Oh yeah, so it was like a week and a half before it all shut down. Yeah, and look, and that's the other thing that we we say, you know, a lot about my dad. Like, uh, you know, I was talking to my mom, and she goes, "Jesus, thank God he wasn't around for this shit." Yeah, well, <laughs> we 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 think that all the time about my mom, but we think that more about how stressful it would have been, you know. Well, yeah, but my mom's. I said, um, yeah, is it because, you know, dad's like, he was in his 80s and he probably would have caught it. She goes, no, they closed the fucking pubs. <laughs> <laughs> she would have been driven demented. Because <laughs> <laughs> my, dad, my dad was a black belt at saying he'd be back in a minute. He was brilliant at that. That's, he did that all the way up till he died. He'd be like, back in a minute. I'm just um, going to get the paper. Are we going to do the lottery? <laughs> his grandkids, his grandkids probably had a false sense of what a minute was. <laughs> like exactly. when you when you say to your kid, uh, "We'll do that in a minute," he probably thinks, "Oh, I guess that means six hours." <laughs> that, is, that is the exact same analogy as Billy Connolly saying he's going for a pint. Do you remember that stuff? Oh, actually, I I don't I don't know that one. Oh, what? No, Billy Connolly said he used, his dad used to say he was going for a pint, and uh, they all thought a pint must have been like this big. <laughs> 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 How fucking long does it take to drink a pint? But yeah, so I mean, it's it, it it's not I did like like how because you got this double thing. Like you got a separation. Now your dad's died, and you, you're 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 on your own. So I know that we're used to that as comedians. But like, have you felt this to be better or worse? I know you can't compare because it's the only thing you're experiencing. But I don't think I would have liked to have been forced to be with myself that this much right after dealing with so much. No, um, and. Well, basically, I had a bit of a tidal wave. I had stuff coming at me hard and fast. So um, my father-in-law died in December, uh, Eddie. Uh, Brenda's yeah. uh, uh, dad, who was a beautiful man and my children's like best friend. So he died then there. Then my then my dad died, you know, in February. And also the separation was going on. Yes. And then, yeah, it, it it's it's been weird, but like, the only thing I can say is that I've kept myself busy trying to do silly sketches, like writing stuff, like doing things, reading books, uh, exercising online, going out for a bit of a cycle because I'm in the countryside. I can do a bit of a lap thing. But no, um, and that's what actually at the very start is what I was going to say to you was um, when my dad died, uh, I was standing in the corridor going, what, what do you do now? And because my elder eldest brother is in Sweden and I have two little sisters, Everybody just looked at me, and because I'm a comedian, I suppose, and we we feel like people feel and look to us because we're always in charge on stage. It's just us, mm. and a thousand people. We're in charge. They just looked to me to do everything. And I was going, well, what the what do I do? And so, anyway, rang the funeral home. That went on. He's gotten his finances. 
you know, did the mass crematorium, did everything, did the weight, all that shit, all went on, all went on, all went on. And probably, yeah, only in the past week or so, like from this day, has it all kind of slowed down and stopped, all the busyness. Right. And now I'm kind of going, oh, shit, my dad's dead. <laughs> you know I, mean? I didn't even think. Yeah. Because I was looking after my mom, my sisters, everybody, the aunties, uh, on the phone to people. And my dad wasn't a human at that stage. He was just an item. It was almost like uh, I had to get this thing done. But I wasn't really thinking it was my dad that was dead. I was almost thinking that my dad was going to come in beside me and go, did mm. you get that thing done? Yeah. And I'm going, oh, shit, that thing is you. Yeah, how are you getting on with me funeral? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You fucking hate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that because, you know, the the story always goes, and it was certainly this way for me, is that the easiest part is the funeral because it's all exactly what you're saying. And then eventually life moves on, people get on with their lives, and then you're left with yourself, and that's when it hits you, that next the next round, and there's many rounds. But you, I mean, in a way, like, this is unfair because you're getting that tenfold because not only has, you know, everybody got on with their lives, but you've, the whole of society has fucking stopped. So you're just stuck, you know? But then maybe, actually, maybe all this was, was actually another distraction that actually prolonged the moment where you're finally sitting down and going, dad's dead, you know? Yeah, may, yeah, I think, yeah, it is good to be on my own for a little bit to actually think about what's going on with my dad. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I've definitely grieved them. And but the grieving for me uh, is like I could just be sitting watching the telly and I just start crying, mm. or I'm making cornflakes. But I'm not crying as in like oh my God, like that. I'm I'm actually this face is the same, but there's tears pouring out of my eyes, which is where we must just overspill or overfill. The cup must just overfill, and it's just the emotions must just spill out where I fucking don't even know what's happening. But that's what grief was for me and still is. But yeah, I mean, I was just, and then I was sitting like last night, I remember just thinking, oh God, I really don't want him to be dead now. Do you know what I mean? Like, I I'm know, going, that's oh, what sucks is like, sometimes I you go, just get an urge, like, oh, I'd love to make a call. Or... You see, and I was, and also I was saying to my mom as well, who we can't grieve with. We can't fucking hug her and hold oh, her. Cause it's she... so tough. And it's tougher for them. I mean, I'm, I, yeah. I think it's tougher for the spouse personally. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Like, absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, she's, she was, she was actually saying like, oh my God, I can't believe he left me at this time. But oh, I love God. the way sometimes mammies talk like that as if it was the dad's choice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, going, yeah. Oh fuck, this COVID thing's coming, I've had enough of this shit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. But like, she was, yeah, and so it was just, mom and dad just lived together, obviously, but dad did everything for mom. Like, he set up her pills in the morning, made her bits of breakfast, she was it. Well capable of it, but dad just liked to be in control of stuff. Like even when we went to sort out dad's finances, mom had no bank card. Dad used to walk up to the shops with her and take the cash out and give it to her. Wow. So she didn't have a bank card. And um, then we found like 800 quid in her purse because that's what that's where she lodged her pension. <laughs> like, so we had to sort out fucking everything. I go, what are you doing, mom? And she goes, well, sure, geez, I just put it in there. I mean, put it in the fucking credit union. <laughs> like, that shit's been going on. Me dad drove her everywhere. Like he did everything. So it, so that's why you're, it's, you're right. It's hard for the spouse because my mom's life just went, stop like that. Because dad died in two days. It wasn't like... Yeah, it wasn't. We had all this time to prepare. Patient. I'm just using cancer as an example because your dad obviously was dying for a long time and probably got his affairs in order and he was able to do that shit. And, but my God, my dad just bang and then the funniest thing was we we're going we don't know what he owns or what he has and then we we're sitting around because as i say you do laugh a lot i mean the irish are great and you're american irish you know what they're like they're so good at bringing humor into yeah. terrible situations and um so you were saying you oh, were yeah, sitting I, down what you, you you were about to tell a story there Oh yeah, yeah. So oh, fuck, I was, oh god, hang on. You, you were oh, talking god. about you, you. We we didn't know what he had. That's what you said. You oh, said. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. You're sitting there knowing what he had, and he said, um, I "said Do you reckon he has any savings?" And then we were all thinking, and then we all just burst out laughing, going, "There's no fucking way he's had any savings, <laughs> right?" We were like, Why? And the main reason my dad doesn't have any savings is because he wouldn't want the stress of it. 
<laughs> I know this is weird, but Dad would be going, I'm not having a fucking direct debit coming out of my account and me having to fucking lodge money into something else. And what's that going on? And the tax man will probably want a bit of that. There's no way. Fine. No. He no. had nothing. Oh, he so really? Pay. So you guys, you didn't have a big inher other than the house when that which your mom get automatically gets? No, no other. Yeah, we, yeah, no, we've packed my mom's bags and straight after coronavirus, she's like off to a home because she's, you know, she's not, she's not well. <laughs> well, you could always just fucking find a friend that has corona and fucking tell the call to your mom. <laughs> <laughs> or have you ever seen the Peter K ad? It's really old. It's a Peter K, the comedian. He does an ad for Bonnington's beer or something. You can YouTube it. It's very funny. What's the the man, the mother, the mother's on her own hoover and the, the thing. And he comes in, he goes, all right, ma'am, right, you're off, you're off. And he brings in her bag and starts throwing clothes in it and then puts her coat on. <laughs> but I felt, I, I felt for your mom, really, because she was very stoic at the funeral. Like, she really kind of, like, seemed like a rock solid. And I figured that she's going to – I was worried that there would be some land for her, you know? Well, she did say she didn't really actually believe that he was dead, like. Yeah. Did feel as well that she was just at a funeral, but she didn't feel it was my dad's. Like it, it just didn't sink in with her. It only sunk in with her here now while she's been in isolation there, where she I rang her and she just got really upset on the phone. I, and I hadn't heard her cry like this because when Dad died in the hospital, my mom actually said to me, uh, "I feel really, really bad." Why? She goes, "Well, why am I crying?" I says, "Mom, you're in shock. You know what I mean? It's 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 a that's a natural thing." You know, and like one of my sisters was really, really upset, Ethna, and but you know, we were all kind of matter of fact. I was, I was distraught and so sad that he was dead. But you can't make yourself cry because I mean, I could feel the shock inside me. Just oh my god, he's dead. And my mom, I says, my mom didn't understand. She thought she'd be on her knees wailing and rosary beads and help me, and she felt guilty that yeah. she wasn't doing that. And I went, ma'am. This is so surreal. It's just so fucking surreal. We've never gone through it. So you don't know what's happening. And then this was it. Only last week on the phone, she absolutely lost it. Do I mean, I mean? It's, it's so unlucky for your mom, though, in the sense that, like, the one time in in, in, in a century that we're all stuck at home and she, she's just grieving and just lost her life partner. She has to fucking do all this on her own. It's awful for her, yeah. But, but your sister moved in, did she? No, she didn't get to move in. Uh, it all just happened because she was yeah. moving out of her, her house. So she will be moving in, but she's near enough to my mom to go down to her every day. So my oh, mom's yeah. doing that. And we live in Ludford Drive, Ballantyre, big housing estate. We've all, we like when anybody dies on the road, no matter where we all are, unless, you know, unless we're too far away in the world, we all come home for funerals and for like other people's moms and dads and children and kids. We the whole, it's such a great community, and they're my my mate Carl, my best friend Carl McDermott. Uh, he came over and just he was mowing his mother's lawn. And he just pushed the lawnmower across the road and down a bit, and met and did my mum's. Oh, that's nice. I did. Home. I did get a good feeling. The priest was. I thought the priest was great at your dad's funeral, and I did get a real. You get a, a volunteer community vibe from from that from that funeral, which was quite nice. I mean, that must have felt nice for you. Yeah, I mean, like, that whole road brought us up. So we had loads of mammies and daddies because they were all out at the pillars. They were all talking to us. They all raised us together. Mm. So, like, when we say hello to my, let's say, my mate's mom and dad, uh, let's say Carl's mom, Betty, or Kieran Talon's uh, dad, uh, you know, when I say hello to them, they're hugging me and saying hello like I'm their son. Like, yeah. it was that close. Like wandering now, their houses did mad shit. Like me, it's so funny. But all of our dads were the same. They were all they all went to the pub. Like my oh, actually, my dad though. This is a great one because uh, at the funeral, my uncle Tony, who's of course not my uncle, do you know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> he goes, Jason, come over to your uncle Tony here. I went sat down with him, and Tony said, "I, we were, I was on, tell, I'll tell you a story about your dad." I went, "What?" And he goes, "I was on holidays with him once." Because we never went on holidays with our parents because my dad always said we wouldn't enjoy it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, this. <laughs> we, they go to fucking Spain and we go, why are we going? My dad goes, it's too hot. You wouldn't enjoy it. You're going to be staying with the neighbours so we stay with them. <laughs> 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 anyway, he said they were on holidays once. Uh, I don't know where they were at this point. Tony said, um, 
we were out drinking all night, you know what I mean, whatever. And um, your dad at two o'clock went, oh, jeez, I'm hammered. I'm hammered, he says, he's, I'll, I'll never be able to walk home. He said to Tony, he said, I better get the car. <laughs> <laughs> and he fucking drove home. And the next day, Tony went, my dad says, jeez, thank God I got the car. I never would have made it home. Back to the <laughs> so the drinking and the driving and... Then another story he told me, this is a lovely, I mean, this is, this is stuff that doesn't happen anymore. And, you know, it's kind of, and these are the memories I'm going, oh my God, I've got to remember all this shit that I found about my dad and the memories of, of the past. It's just this stuff, like, it's so sad that things this can't happen anymore, but it's not great, but it's kind of sad because, so they, they used to go on rugby trips whenever Ireland were playing in Wales. They always went to Wales, my dad, and he stayed, he stayed with Welsh friends and they all went to the rugby together. Yeah. But my dad working in, uh, my dad didn't like flying. So every second trip, they had to go on a ferry, right? So to please my dad. But everybody loved my dad because they all went, oh, no problem. And they didn't give a fuck because they'd be drinking on the ferry on the lap. Yeah. So my dad got, because he worked for Guinnesses, he got a, a small keg of Guinness. He robbed it from Guinnesses. He robbed the tap <laughs> and he robbed the gas and he put it in the boot of the car. And they got on the ferry, right? <laughs> and this is what's lovely. They got into Wales and they were driving along. And then my dad, like, alcohol and drink was just all around my dad all the time. He was never, he wasn't, he was all right on drink. He wasn't a mad, he, he'd never know my dad was drunk when he drank. He was exactly the same, right? Just a bit more of a messer. And he's driving along, right, in the car. And he says to Tony and the lads, do you reckon we should see if that Guinness thing works with the gas and all? He went, well, we're on a motorway in Wales. He went, well, it's a lovely day. Let's pull over and just see if it works. <laughs> so they pulled over. My dad took the keg out, put the Guinness up and the tap and was, pouring Guinness to the lads at the side, right? And then the Welsh cops pulled in, right? And this is what's lovely. And the Welsh cops went, what are you doing there, boys? And my dad went, oh, we were just uh, testing this. We're not drinking it. We're just testing it because we're going to the match and we're going to have it in the car park and we're not going to have it here. And the Welsh lads went, you can't be doing that Irish shit over here now, right? And my dad went, oh, really sorry. And then that same cop and his mate went, is that, is that Guinness from Dublin? And my dad went, yeah, and he went, we taste a bit of that. <laughs> we'll test it for you. We'll test it for you. <laughs> what the beautiful picture is, Des. In the late eighties, there's my dad and his mates and two coppers with their sleeves rolled up, all drinking Guinness on the side of a motorway. I mean, it's a it's a lovely image, but it's it, in a way, I'm glad that time is gone. But at the same time, it is a lovely image. <laughs> I, know, I know we shouldn't be drinking and driving or whatever they did, but like, it's just amazing that mm. that type of thing happened you know what I mean I know it it's a different it, 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 it is a different time but your dad I feel like when you tell me stories of your dad I really feel like it's a throwback to Ireland like I always there's a bit of a snapper vibe about your dad you know oh yeah yeah I mean he's brilliant I mean I wrote a book called uh, The Wonky Eyed Boy my first ever book it's like memoirs of me growing up in Dublin and my dad features in it so much that at the book launch people started queuing up to fucking get me dad to sign the book <laughs> Well, you tell great stories about your dad, man. Oh, so yeah. He, I mean, he's. It was just endless the stuff. I mean, I I, I was in the shed with him once because I, I put up a picture of his infamous shed. That's yes, where he, I saw that. It was nice, actually. It was very yeah, nice. Yeah, the cigarettes and the whiskey. I mean, that's where he spent. I mean, if he was in isolation now, he would be just in that shed. He wouldn't be even in the house. <laughs> He'd be like, "Say to me, mum, we have to be isolated. We have to be distance." I'll put up more gas heaters out here, and I can just stay. Out well, here. he could have got a gig in RTE then, because they're all doing fucking shows from their sheds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not all the interviews. All the interviews on telly now are like this. Hip, what's going? What do we, what do we, what do we? <laughs> and then kids go, "Yeah, fuck you, dad." <laughs> so my dad, I spoken to him. I, I said I was doing a book lunch. Now you, all you had to do with my dad was say, "Here's a pen," or "There's an apple," and his story would just go way off, right? And have nothing to do with the pen or the apple. So I said I was doing a book launch in St. Patrick's Cathedral in the green area. You know, do you know that cathedral? There's a there's a big kind of green in the church, the church grounds, basically. Right, right. St. Right. Patrick's Cathedral. And um so basically which is very near Christ Church there. And so I said I was doing it there. And my dad went, Oh, you're doing it, where are you doing it? He says there, he goes, Oh yeah, I used to be a market. I went, What? Yeah, years ago when I was a kid, that was a market, you know, like a horse market and all. And he said, and, uh, and then, and this stuff, you know, it was never even true, these bits. And then he'd add in this, he go, that's where the Indians, uh, they used to sell rotten meat in that market. 
And I went, what? He goes, yeah, the Indians used to bring in rotten meat and they get spices and they put it all over the rotten meat so you wouldn't know the meat was rotten. And he goes, and that's what Indians do with rotten meat and that's why spices were invented, which is true, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what they did. But my dad still, to this day, even though he's not alive, he still went, and that's why I never go for Indians because the meat's rotten. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. No, it isn't. That's like fucking nearly a hundred years ago, you mad bastard. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. And he really believes that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like you hear, remember the quote of story say I'll say real quick, when I went with Colin Murphy to Hong Kong to do gigs. Remember we used to there used to be gigs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those those little circuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And me and Colin Murphy were coming back and there was this guy, you know, Arab, Muslim dressed in, you know, all the gear. And he was he was drunk, very obviously drunk. And he was telling the stewardess to F off and everything. And, and then he was doing a weird thing. When people went to the toilet, he would sit in their seats. And then he was robbing other bits of drink. And I told my dad this. And this is one of my dad's classic lines. And I was in a pub when I told this to my dad with his mates. And my dad was listening. He goes, well, you see what the story is there? And I went to off. He goes, he's a Muslim. I went, uh, yeah, probably, probably is a Muslim. And the rest of the lads, my dad's mates, they love my dad. And they're going, yeah, da- yeah Paddy, you're right. He was a Muslim. Yeah, he was. He was a Muslim. You see, the thing is, with Muslims, they're not allowed to drink alcohol. I was going, yeah, I know that. And he says, on the earth. (laughs) I swear to God. And his mates were like, change your dad, right, Paddy, that's right. (laughs) And he goes, yeah. So he got on an airplane so he could have a drink off the earth. So when he landed, he wasn't even messing. He was deadly serious. I bet you fucking Googled it. Oh? I bet you Googled it. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Well, that's your thing. I wasn't allowed. I didn't. I wasn't allowed to have my phone in the pub with my dad and his mates. Oh really? Whatever. That was their rule. Yeah, because my dad said, "What do you want a fucking phone for?" And I said, "Well, I don't know. Like, I mean, if there was a question or something or a topic came up, my dad would freak out if he took out your phone to get a date or a fact. Because my dad says, "Do you know how many arguments I've had up here over the years? Like that just took fucking hours." And we've had great crack with them because none of us knew exactly what was the truth. <laughs> well, that's what I always <laughs> said. Google fucked it up because back in the day, you could you could pretend that you were right with like a force of will, but now Google just kills that off. <laughs> like my dad, my dad with the Muslim, you know what I mean? You know that Google would have ruined that for my dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's not allowed drink, Dad. Look, it says it here. You go, ah, for fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He would have just thought. <laughs> that in his head now, Muslims are not allowed to drink as long, you know, up, up, up on the earth. So, what are you gonna? Are you gonna? You think you're gonna do a show, or are you just gonna do a few bits about your dad, or what? Well, what was really tough was uh, my dad died, and then obviously I had to cancel four shows. But the following week, I had shows, and I thought, look, I'm not going to cancel them. I'm going to talk about my dad, who's like in the, in past tense, and just talk about the stories that he he told me in the past, like the way I'm doing it with you. Yeah. That's all I did. But like what I'm trying to do now at the moment, because I'm in isolation, I've got time doing little sketches. I, I'm trying to write little monologues and I'm going to dress up as my dad and just sit in the corner and have <laughs> my point of view with the COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea, actually. The kind of That's old, the old school, that. yeah, old school Dublin guy's view on the, on the COVID, you know? Oh, Jesus, I would not, imagine what he would have said. Like, you know what I mean? It just would have been insane. You know, just to, I can't. I'm just trying to think of what he would have thought of what it was, or how do you think? Part, let me. Sorry, I was just going to say. I'll just throw out a scenario. How do you think he would feel about the shutdown? Do you think he'd be totally behind it, or do you think he'd be like, you know, uh, this is a load of bollocks, you know? A load of bollocks. Now, now he would. He would. He, my dad was kind of two faced. You know what I mean? He'd be going, "It's a load of bollocks. I'll go wherever the fuck I want. Nobody's telling me where to go." And he'd drive out. And if a cop stopped him, he'd go, "You know, fair play to your dead boy." <laughs> That's what my dad's like. So he's like very, a lot of old Irish men that are just, you know, full of shit. And then when they're told to do something, and that's where the wife steps in. Where my mom and <laughs> you're not going anywhere. My dad would have a fuck. Tell you, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. So he, would, he would have said, um, he would have come up with loads of silly facts where basically he would have went, you don't get it from hugging. And it doesn't come from spit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It comes from the hair, hair follicles. Hair follicles. You would have just start making up stuff that it comes out of the tip ends of your hair or something. Or and then of course the Chinese would have got it in the neck, big time. Oh. 
<laughs> was, our parents were all racist, but they weren't. But they were. Well, yeah, there was a it, like. It, you, you don't dismiss any racism, but there's a there's a difference between willful racism and just pure ignorance of like having had no experience with other races. No, my dad would never have met anybody from China. Do you know what I mean? No way, ever. Yeah, so, so he would have just went. He would have went off on the meat and the bats, and they're always eating everything. They're eating butterflies and whatever else. <laughs> <So, laughs> it was probably the butterfly soup that did it. That's what it was. <laughs> did, them all, did everybody in? But yeah, look. I I think he probably would have see he would have, I swear to God he just would have went to that shed though and just smoked his head off. But the other lucky thing is if he hadn't had this stroke during this time, we wouldn't have been able to go to hospital with him. or wouldn't have been with him when he died. Well, he wouldn't have had a funeral. I mean, yeah, that's why I was saying it's kind of weird luck, you know. Yes, it is, and isn't it? And it's kind of conflicting that you keep saying, "Oh, we're lucky this happened," and "You're lucky this happened," but he's dead. So you're going, I mean, that's, I mean, I was, we were standing over the coffin in the house and um, I was kind of laughing away and my auntie was going, what are you laughing at? I says, I says, my dad only said to me like two weeks ago that he went to a funeral and he was standing over the coffin and somebody said, oh my God, doesn't he look well? He looks well. And my dad went, how the fuck does he look well? He's dead. (laughs) (laughs) When people are coming in, going, he looks cool, he looks great and there's coming but me dad would be going, I'm dead. How do we look well in here? I'm fucking dead. <laughs> I'd, ra- I'd like, rather be here looking at fucking an empty coffin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great. I mean, and I, 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 I don't know how people feel, but the, I'd highly recommend it. Uh, the cremation thing was lovely. It was a really lovely ceremony. And I felt like my dad was always like that. He wasn't heavily religious. So he, he didn't want to, he wouldn't have wanted all the fuss. I mean, basically... If he was being put down into the ground with everybody going, coming around, I could just hear him going, what's everyone crying for? I'm already all fucking looking at me for, for folks. They just get, don't, don't be doing this. Just put me out in a, in a, in a furnace and burn me. I'll be grand. Like yeah. we were asked, do we want to walk up behind the hearse up to the church? And I actually said, no way, my dad would kill us. There's no way I'm doing that. Too much, too, said, well, that's too much ceremony, too much pump. Too much attention. My dad yeah. hated us. Like my dad would have went, Get in the car. What are you all doing? Fucking walking behind me and making me well, then, then I'm sure he's glad that his funeral was held in a fucking gymnasium. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the or, the oratory. The, what, what is it called? The or, the oratory? Yeah, Saint Attractus Oratory. <laughs> And I was looking at the basketball fucking. Hoops. I was looking for the basketball hoops. I was like, "Will we play fucking basketball yeah, after this?" <laughs> Yo, come on! <laughs> but it was great. You know what was great about that place? is that the acoustics are really good for your eulogy. Like it was actually like actually a very good venue for a eulogy because churches are shit for eulogies in the sense that you have to speak really slow. Everything's echoey. Whereas like your, your eulogy just came out really nice. It, it just, you could hear everything you said. It was great. Yeah. And I, I think like, I mean, of course, I mean, we're comedians, we're, we're used to talking in front of people, but I mean, I think like, everybody, you should you should really give a good old eulogy. Like you should definitely do one because a lot of people don't do one. They let the priest say. Well, that. and the, the 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 church try to get you not to do one a lot of the time. Yeah, well, that's bullshit. You know what I mean? Because first of all, my dad wasn't religious. We were asked when we went up to meet the priest beforehand, which was so funny. And he and the priest didn't know my dad for shit. Like you know, oh what really? I mean? God, the way he talked was like that. The you know, like the way he talked about your dad. I literally thought that. Yeah. No. No, he said, so he said to my, it, we were all sitting around, he went, so would Paddy have gone to mass? And before we could even answer, my mom went, in the early days. <laughs> <laughs> I was going, what the fuck's the early days? Yeah, our you know, wedding? Our wedding? <laughs> yeah, that's all he did, yeah. And then this was the best one. I, I had to answer it. And he said, so would Paddy been involved in the community? Would he been like, you know, supported the local GEA team or helped out with the U club and I was going can we all start laughing and I said yeah the only community he helped was in the pub that's the community he helped up there <laughs> and when I was up in the pub actually in the pub that he drank it afterwards the old men at the bar there was a part where dad would have sat with them all they were they were more upset than than we all were they're all just sitting there and we went over Harry lads and they went they go I can't fucking believe it's Paddy Bourne why does it have to be Paddy because my dad was very funny. Like, he always mingled and mixed with them all, had a good laugh. And they were all going, I can't believe it's him. They're actually in shock. Because my dad, see, that's the thing with my dad. My dad wasn't a quiet little old man. Uh, and that's what the shock was, because he was 80. 
uh, but he had his full head of hair. It was like wasn't even grey or nothing. He was all full on, and he wasn't a frail man. He was driving like the day before he had the stroke. He was driving, drinking, no problem, but not drinking and driving. Would you know what I mean? Like making the dinners, doing everything, talking away to me on the phone, and then just the stroke. I mean, that's the thing with strokes. Yeah. That's what you got to say to everybody is that, you know, my dad really didn't think he was going to have a stroke. He was told time and time again, you've got a pacemaker, you're on heart tablets, you're smoking, um, you're, you're drinking your whiskey out in the shed. So you at least stop the smoking because you're clogging up your heart. And my dad would be like, oh yeah, no, I will, I will, I will. He just never really believed it and they were t they were they said to him paddy you will have a stroke you will drop down it'll bang hit you so hard so my dad actually had a minor stroke when he was about 70 oh he right was very tiny no tiny he, he just couldn't read properly and he got over it in about a week so that's probably what he thought was going to happen to him again but anybody listening away my god my mom rang me and said she kept saying i can't Get your dad out of bed. His back, his back is sore. His back is sore. I can't get him out. He won't move. So now I'm thinking he's dead. Like, and my mom is in total shock. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Did she call nine 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 nine? Oh no 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 no. She didn't. She just didn't know what was going on. So she, because when she went into my dad, she rang me within ten minutes, and I was actually my sister's. I was only like five minutes away. So I went up, got up there, and my dad was in the bed. He was alive. But his right hand, he could only move his right hand. And he was trying to grab, like it was almost like he was trying to grab his, pull his, pull himself out of his body because his whole left side was all gone. He couldn't talk. He couldn't focus. He was just shaking and banging things. And do you know what I mean? Like yeah. all, it was horrible to see. I thought he was going to die in front of me. I thought he's actually dying in front of me. But my mom still went, he, he's something wrong with his back. And I rang the ambulance straight away. I went and they went what's the story i said he's had a massive stroke and they said do you want to do a few tests i went look i will i sent my mom out of the room and i said i held my dad's hand that he could grip me with and he could still say j all right j all right j all like right that. he could yeah he put very he was, it was the only way i can explain it was it was as if he was down a rabbit hole looking out at me he was stuck in there do you know what i mean he was grabbing to be pulled out of this situation he was grabbing onto life and um, so I went through the process of the ambulance. Oh, my God, they're amazing. So they got there fucking 20 minutes. And then, you know, I says, you know, and they went, yeah, well, he's had a, you know, they said he's, he's pretty sick. They didn't say he had a massive stroke because I don't think they're not, they're not allowed to say yeah, shit. Yeah, they can't make like a diagnosis. So they were just kind of, I was saying shit and they were kind of nodding at me. Do you know what I mean? I said he's had a massive stroke and they were like, yeah, well, look, let's just, uh, you know. So this was funny. My dad's upstairs in his bedroom. My dad's put a spiral staircase into our semi-detached house. Because in Guinnesses, a fellow went around one day and did a deal on spiral staircases with loads of Guinness men. I don't know what the fuck happened, right? But loads of Guinness men went home and ripped out their lovely long stairs and put a stupid fucking spiral staircase in, which has been an absolute death trap for our family. We've all fallen down it. My mum's fallen down it, holding on to the kids. My dad's fallen through the fucking gaps drunk. It's a disaster, right? So my dad's had a stroke. He's now come severely bad. They've wrapped him into a chair, the ambulance men, right? And they're trying to take him. They're trying to take him down the, st the staircase. And this is where Irish ambulance men and women are brilliant. They wouldn't stop teasing me, dad. And my dad is fucked at this stage. He can barely talk or move. And they're going, "Did you build this fucking thing, Paddy?" What the fuck? You're going to try and kill a whole lot of us. Jeez. <laughs> they tried to get him down the stairs and they went, holy mother of fuck. Look at me fucking my foot's going through the stairs. <laughs> and they got well, him down. That was nice for you guys too, though, you know? It was really nice. Yeah, they're really good at that. And then in the ambulance, I went with dad and they're still, they talk to your, your dad or your mum or your whoever it is as if there's nothing wrong with them. There is no fear in them. You know what I mean? They're brilliant at that. I mean, they do go and study, you know, how all their, you know, medical uh, paramedic background. But like the one thing that they're just amazing at is is the personal touch, yeah, the, the empathy the, that they have, the human interaction. It's amazing, and it means at moments like that, it means so much. I think, you know, to you. Yeah, the guys after dad there, I couldn't stop thanking them, and they they, you know, and one of them had been to one of my shows, you know, but like 
he still wasn't going on about my show. He was still being really nice about my dad. He didn't make it about me. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. That's great, man. Well, now, he's he's, now, like, now that they're also even further into the hell of the fucking pandemic, you'll have to, uh, you'll have to find a way to do something for them uh, afterwards, or we all will. Yeah, we'll think of something. Do you know what I mean? I think, to be honest, I'm kind of doing that right now. I'm trying to uh, go on Facebook Live and talk to people when they want to talk to me. Uh, I've been doing little sketches for people. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I've been doing like uh, training with my trainer live on Instagram. So any of those healthcare or anybody who wants to just join in, a uh, bit of fitness stuff as well. Yeah, so um, you might as well, we, we better wrap it up. But what's your, uh, you might as well do the promo. What's your Instagram? Instagram is uh, the Jason Byrne, T H E, the Jason Byrne. At the Jason Byrne. Yeah, and it's got a blue tick and it's on the Facebook. And so this Friday, uh, I'm releasing my podcast, right? And just to give you, uh, to summarize, uh, just real quickly, right? Actually, so t tomorrow? Uh, yeah, tomorrow. Okay, yeah. great. So uh, I'll summarize this. And the reason why I love saying summarize, summarize, was I once went with Ryan Tuberty to his brother's house. He was at Nile, I think, Neil, Dr. Nile. Yeah, He's like and, a neurosurgeon. And, and, yeah, in Dublin 6. Do you know him? Have yes, been I've, him? I've been to the brother's house. <laughs> what, my God. The <laughs> man of, I mean, my God, right? Ryan was going, I once interviewed Kathleen, T T Kathleen uh, Turner. Turner, was it? Yeah. Was it Kathleen Turner? Who's Romance and Stone? Yeah, Kathleen uh, Turner. Yeah, Kathleen Turner. And he didn't even get to finish, and his brother goes, Summarize, summarize. Jesus <laughs> Christ, Ryan. I mean, how the fuck are you a chat show host? Come on. <laughs> so basically, my podcast is called Mind Your Loaf. I'm, I've got a co-host called Mark Cusack, and uh, she's amazing. And uh, we, I just wanted to do this. It's like a mental health, well-being type thing. But I'm doing it. The reason I'm doing it is because it's this website called Turn to Me, which is T-U-R-N, number two, me, dot I-E. And that's free counseling online for anybody that uh, wants it. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's amazing. It's a total charitable thing, and they asked me to do a podcast on it, so it's great fun. The first episode is about happiness, and there's a guy called Andy Cope, and he's a doctor of happiness, and he studied for 12 years. He's so funny, right? And we've got like, all, and then there's six, six other uh, themes, and there's a guest on each week, and so uh, he, 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 this is a great one to listen to. Like, so Andy Cope, and he brought out a book called Shine. He's got loads of well-being, keynote speaking, and all that kind of stuff he does. And, but the last thing he said to me, and you'll appreciate this because of who you have right beside you there. He says, one last thing, Jay, he goes, what? He says, be the person that your dog thinks you are. <laughs> <laughs> it just, that's such a lovely story. Well, I can tell you right now that if this dog that I'm fostering could speak and he met any of my ex-girlfriends, my ex-girlfriends would be like, you, this guy's full of shit. <laughs> Thank you for looking after me. Thank you for bringing me out for walks. Oh my God, I love you. You're so brilliant. They'd all be like, they'd all be like, it's not going to last. <laughs> <laughs> a dog forever. Uh, Listen, dude. why is he in a brace and all? Like, what's wrong? Because she, she got spayed right before I got her. So, uh, what's spayed? Spade is uh, the female neutering, you know. Take, she's, oh, sorry, spade. Yes. Yeah, spade. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's only just uh, so she doesn't lick the lick the wound. Ah, oh, she's yeah. a cute dog. No, she's great. She's great. But anyway, now I have to go because actually my computer's going to run out of batteries, and the one thing wow. I don't want to do is lose this recording. But you know what? I was going to put this up tomorrow, but I think I'm going to put it up today because it's better promo for your podcast. So actually, I'm going to put this up. I'll put this up straight away. First of all. So I can I'm gonna do things. I'm gonna do all that. I'm gonna do all that. And it's great and okay. thank you. And I'll I'll call you uh on a normal phone in about a half an hour when I'm done with all this shit just to say thanks because I feel like it's an impersonal thing. But uh I'm sure all of Ireland wants to say uh sorry for your loss, but also thank you for uh sharing so honestly. Yeah, and as my dad would say, ah, oh, she can ask me bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go on, get off. Get off, talk to you. Bye, oh, bye. See you, man. Bye. 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 See you. Bye. 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 bye, bye, bye. So uh, that was Jason Byrne there, and uh, I'm just gonna I just want to sign off by saying, add Jason at the Jason Byrne. Uh, all the info will be on his Instagram about the podcast. Um, this has been the Des Bishop podcast. Fantastic episode. There's nothing else that needs to be said. Uh, message me at Des Bishop on Instagram. Um, message me at. Uh, 
sorry, I'm distracted by some some feedback that's coming in on Jason's phone. But uh, message me at um, facebook.com forward slash Des Bishop, uh, Twitter at Des Bishop. Leave comments, please leave comments in the iTunes podcast is going great. This is going up on YouTube, obviously. So subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe. I, I don't know how to do those things, but subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And uh, we'll uh, we'll chat to you guys soon. Thanks.